Hey everyone! So I am just making this video in the hopes that it will help some of the people out there teaching online for the first time, or maybe even those who are used to teaching online and just haven't really prepared for what's currently happening, of course, how could we? Um, so anyway, here's just a little bit of a video that you can share with your students or you can use in class or whatever you need um, that will hopefully help you out with some of this, this information. So my name is Andrea Akita. Um, I'm a folklorist and I'm a professor at East Carolina University. And a lot of my work deals with uh, pandemic illness and the narrative surrounding it. Um, and I also work a lot with um, health information and how we make medical decisions and a lot of stuff surrounding that. So I'm going to do this video. I am just going to keep going no matter what happens because I'm trying to get this out as fast as possible for all of those of you who are trying to prepare classes and everything. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start today with talking a little bit about um, rumor and legend and gossip and kind of explaining that in the context of the coronavirus. And the big thing I want you to kind of take away from today is that um, a lot of the stuff isn't new, it's just uh, the details that are going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to kind of give you an overarching view about um, some of these genres of folklore and, and talk a little bit about them in the context of the coronavirus. So I hope this is helpful. Um, please let me know. I am more than happy to talk to people. You can talk to me on Twitter. I'm just at my own name, Andrea Akita. Um, or you can let your students even talk to me. And if I'm not too busy or overwhelmed in any sort of way, I'll do my best to actually talk back. Um, okay, so let's just start with saying that, first of all, there is a big difference between misinformation that is intentionally put out there that is incorrect um, and the stuff I'm talking about today. Uh, so those things a lot of times overlap and they borrow from each other and they really play up on other people's fears and maybe some of the stuff they're actually putting out there. Um, but misinformation is intentionally put out there for nefarious purposes or for the lulls or whatever reason people do this stuff, um, that's kind of a different category. And I'm more than happy to do a different video on that, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so what I'm going to talk about a little bit more is, is folklore and how that spreads and how a lot of times that isn't nefarious in any sort of reason. A lot of times it's, um, it's just what people do when they don't have information, um, or it's what they do when they're processing, or it's something they do to kind of fill in the gaps of information. So there's, um, I'm not going to say that it's not always nefarious. Folklore can be used in really, really poor, bad ways, um, absolutely. But um, for the most part, a lot of what I'm talking about today um, are a lot of people just trying to process information or trying to find good information, are putting things out there and seeing how people respond. And hopefully that'll, um, that'll show you the difference between the two. Um, so let's start with just a couple of really quick definitions. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, rumor and gossip and then I'm going to talk a little bit about contemporary legend and conspiracy theory, because those are all very different things, but they have a lot in common. Um, so let's kind of start with um, gossip, which is usually just sort of unrestrained talk about people. And it's, sometimes it's also social incidents. But when we're talking about gossip, we're usually talking more about things that are like about people or like things within your own little social group. So it's stuff like, oh, my God, did you see her? She threw up this morning. She must be pregnant that's gossip, right? So that's a little bit different from rumor. Um, rumor is usually sort of unverified information that comes from a sort of unverified source as well. Um, so it might be something that you just heard from somewhere. It might not actually be um, really complex in any sort of nature. So if we're talking about coronavirus, it might be things like, I heard um, drinking bleach um, gets rid of the coronavirus. And I will say that is one of the incidences where folklore is not true, okay? Folklore doesn't always mean things that are false. But in this case, please don't drink bleach. I have said this multiple times now. <laughs> please don't drink bleach. Um, so that's one that, that is a little bit more akin to a rumor. It's not exactly like why specifically bleach, um, why not something else, like why not Windex instead of bleach? But, um, you know, it's something along those lines where it's, it's just sort of this, this short, very um, small narrative statement that, that talks a little bit about um, a specific incident. And rumors tend to deal a little bit more with bigger events and people. So they can actually move outside of, of those smaller social groups, right? So with gossip, nobody else outside of your social group cares if someone is pregnant or not, right? Like they don't know those people, they don't care. But a, a rumor can actually get out further, right? Because we do care about these things. So that's what we're seeing a little bit more when we're talking about coronavirus is we're, we're seeing with um, COVID-19, we're seeing a lot more about 
these sort of larger rumors, the things that we all sort of care about. So especially if you're posting these things on social media, they'll actually go outside of your friendship group, especially if you set your privacy settings to do that. Um, so those things can actually become viral, which is kind of an interesting term to use right now, isn't it? Um, so that stuff can really get out there really fast because it, it doesn't necessarily depend on just the people you know. Um, it can spread in other ways as well. Um, so there's a lot of differences between these two, these two, especially when we're talking about gossip and rumor. They have a lot in common, but the big thing is gossip is about more about people. Rumor is uh, a little bit more about events and, and larger things, right? So sometimes rumor can be about people too, um, like someone famous like Tom Hanks having and his wife both having uh, COVID-19. That gets a little bit more where it's a little bit more of a blurred line. But generally speaking, that's I'm giving you a very basic definition right here, by the way, too. So don't at me, folklorists. <laughs> so... Um, I'm going to talk next a little bit about um, urban legends. Um, folklore is like the term contemporary legend just because they don't all happen in urban places, but we recognize that urban legend is, is typically what people say. Um, so we know that that's what people are more more used to using. Um, so I'm fine with kind of going between the two. So, But if you're ever looking for, for information on urban legends and you're like, why is there nothing academic written on this? It's because we call it contemporary legend. That's why. Um, so if we talk a little bit about contemporary legends, um, they have a lot in common too with rumor and gossip, um, but they tend to, to circulate um, in a lot of different ways, and they tend to be a little bit more complex with a narrative. Um, but sometimes then you'll actually, you'll start with the legend, and then the legend will actually kind of go down to the rumor level. And I, I write a lot about vaccines, so I talk about this a lot, where a lot of people knew this more sort of complex narrative about um, the supposed link between um, autism and the MMR vaccine, which is not true, by the way, either, just in case you're caring about fact checking. Um, but a lot of times people didn't know all that complex narrative. They didn't know about the medical study. They didn't know the whole entire history of it. Um, they just knew that vaccines cause autism, right? They didn't know what specific ones. So that's when you see an actual legend kind of move down to the rumor um, because it's so well known. It's so popular. You don't even have to have the whole narrative. You can just use that little tiny bit. Um, so we see that, that um, especially with contemporary legends, they, they tend to um, involve contemporary events and people. Um, they're generally anonymous. We don't usually know a, a specific person that's involved with them. Um, and we see these a lot of times that they really kind of talk about our fears and anxieties. And that's so what's happening right now with COVID-19, right? Um, we're, we're seeing all of these legends that are really tying into these things that we're afraid of. And, and that's why they're so powerful. And that's why they, they seem correct in a lot of ways. And this is one of the things I love about um, legends is that they always seem believable, even if they're not totally believed, right? And I love this idea of them being believable because it's one of those things where you hear them and you're like, oh, that doesn't sound exactly right but it kind of sort of sounds right so maybe there's something there maybe there's a little tiny kernel of truth in there um so they sound believable in some sort of way and a lot of times they one of the ways they do this is they do what folklorists like to call a fof a friend of a friend um so it sounds like it's someone legit that you can track down and find out this information and know for sure but in reality, if you actually do track that person down and find out that information, you'll probably find out that they heard it from another friend of a friend, right? And that's how these things kind of get around. Um, so it's kind of cool because a lot of times they're they're linked to even like police departments and they seem legit um, because they have that sort of connection. But they most of the time, if you actually try to track them down, there's no real connection. Or you just keep finding more friends of friends of friends of friends. <laughs> um, so that's, that's something that we see a lot of times. Um, sometimes they're also told to just to um, be amusing, right? That's totally fine. Sometimes we tell these legends and we tell them in that context too. We're like, can you believe people are drinking bleach? Um, <laughs> that kind of stuff, right? And that's just because we find it funny um, and we frame it in that sort of way too. So we pass them on in that way. And that's kind of a cool thing too about folklore is sometimes we pass on information that we don't believe, uh, which is kind of kind of weird to think about that will tell people things that we don't believe are true. And it's the same thing like if you think about telling someone um, that breaking a mirror is seven years bad luck. Like you might not actually believe that, but if somebody breaks a mirror around you, you're going to be like, oh, seven years bad luck, right? Um, so that's more of the, the how that works. Um, they also see with the, sorry, I'm trying to find my notes here. Uh, of course, they, they disappeared on me. Um, they, they usually tend to, to circulate pretty frequently. Um, we also see a lot about um, people's point of views in, in legends. And sometimes these are used in incorrect ways. Sometimes they're used 
specifically to put forward people's beliefs, right? Um, and that's when they get really, really bad. And, and sometimes that does happen. So um, sometimes people will use them, especially in terms right now what we're seeing. We'll, I'm seeing a lot of things online that are saying things, um, especially about people of Asian descent and that are very negative towards them. And a lot of that is to kind of justify that belief that people have about other people. Um, and when we're using folklore for racism, that's really bad. And this is one thing that I'm very nervous about with the, the, the COVID-19 outbreak is I want everybody to be safe and I want us all to be good. But at the same time, I also don't want us to be racist, right? And I have heard some really crazy things so far. I shouldn't say crazy. I've heard some very unusual things so far, um, including that Asians are more susceptible. Um, I've also heard people say that um, people who are African-American are less susceptible. And there's nothing to that, that there's, there's no proof of that whatsoever. Um, so again, we're looking at something that is probably also false that happens to be folklore. They're not necessarily two interchangeable terms, right? Um, we also see too with a lot of these that um, a lot of times we see that enhancement of believability in a lot of different ways. So like I mentioned, um, the whole idea that it can be tied back to a police station or it came from the media and that's a big one. The media actually puts out um, legends all the time. And that's really problematic in a lot of different ways because, I mean, fact checking has definitely become more of a thing lately and I'm not trying to like get mad at the media or anything, but in the past, especially, we have seen where they're really perpetuated ideas. And I think we all know that different types of media are different, right? In the past, I used to have to convince my students that like, not everything that you see on the news is real. And guys, everyone knows this now, right? <laughs> um, it all depends on your news source, right? So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of things right now from different news sources that are actually perpetuating legends, especially legends um, about Asians, which is really, really problematic and really bad. So um, that's my general thing about COVID-19 is like, wash your damn hands and don't be a racist. Um, so uh, now that I've given you a little bit more information about legends, and I'm sure um, there are other folklorists out there that can tell you even more. I'm trying to just do this really quick and I'm trying to keep this video really short. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit really quickly about conspiracy theories. And I kind of hate the term conspiracy theory because I think when we hear that, we automatically think of like a guy in a tinfoil hat, right? And um, they're not always the most reliable person in the world, uh, but we all actually engage in conspiracy theories in a lot of different ways. And it might be just um, in these low level ways. So I like to call it conspiracy thinking because I think we all think along those lines and it's usually low level stuff. Like you think that, you know, campus parking is personally out to get you um, or you think they add weight to the scale at the gym, right? That kind of stuff. Like we all believe those sort of low level conspiracy theories. Um, so I, I like that term conspiracy thinking a little bit more because I think it actually engages in what we all do um, universally instead of just those people over there believing things that, you know, don't, that, that to the rest of us might sound um, a little unhinged maybe. Um, so anyway, I think that we should definitely think about that, that we all engage in these things. Um, and that goes across the board for rumor and gossip and all of those things, but especially um, conspiracy thinking as well. We all do that to some extent. The other thing too, that's kind of incorrect about conspiracy theories is that once they start being true, they stop being called conspiracy theories. So at one point, Watergate was a conspiracy theory. Um, the Tuskegee syphilis experiments were also just a conspiracy theory until they just became true, right? Um, so sometimes it, it, it is that these things become true. It's not that they're necessarily all false, but when we hear conspiracy theory, we think automatically false, right? Um, so I think that conspiracy thinking is a little bit better. That's not to say though, that some of the conspiracy thinking that's out there is not false. I am pretty sure a lot of it is. Um, so please don't um, buy into a lot of those things unless you have actual proof. And please, please be careful about the sources that you look at and all the information that you're finding out there. Look for good information. I cannot stress that enough. And there are so many people out there that are better at that and talking about that than I am. Um, talk to your librarians, talk to your fellow folklorists, um, talk to your professors. There's so many people out there that will tell you about good information and how to find good information. And if anybody wants to send me links, I'm more than happy to promote them. Um, please, please, please look at the information you're finding out there. Look at the source of that information and try to find good information. Um, but this is just a little bit on what you're seeing and what you're hearing out there. To me, none of this stuff is new. I have been looking at this stuff for long periods of time. Um, I've also looked historically at these things. So um, none of this stuff is new to me at all. It's just, like I said, the details that, that are interesting. And there are a lot of interesting details this time. So 
Please be careful when you're looking for real medical information. Um, make sure that your source is verifiable. Please look for multiple sources that verify that thing. Um, and be safe and please wash your hands. Okay, please, 20 seconds, wash your hands. All right, take care everybody, bye.